Uh, but just first, I thought I'd get your reaction to what Nimco Ali said in that interview there about Afghanistan. Um, the UK and the US just cut and run. She said, I speak as a former child refugee and as a feminist and activist, but I think that both the UK and the US were actually terrible in the way they handled Afghanistan. I mean, you obviously visited the countries when you were foreign secretary. Do you think we cut and run? I, I can understand that, that that is her view. Um, I don't think anybody would argue that the exit from Afghanistan was handled well. Um, there seem to be a lot of questions and there are a, a number of inquiries going on um, into exactly what happened and why it happened like that. Um, but it does feel very much as if not enough thought was given either to how the um, leaving of Afghanistan would be handled or indeed as to how we can do more to, to help and safeguard what we left behind. Yes, it's important um, not to take our eye off Afghanistan while, of course, the situation in Ukraine remains what it is as well. Um, President Biden yesterday sounded an awful lot like he was calling for regime change in Russia when he said that Putin cannot remain in power. Was he right to say what he did? I rather like what we've seen of Joe Biden. I know that he gets a lot of criticism, but he strikes me as being somebody who has strong feelings and is inclined to then just voice them. Um, and, you know, uh, maybe we don't get quite enough of that um, sincerity and, and uh, reaction sometimes from people in our political world. Uh, I'm sure that his staff and the people around him are right to say America's not calling for regime change. But equally, I think many people will sympathise with the sentiments that led him to say what he did. Do you think that's something that you've seen change in politics then, in the, in the years that you've been there, people speaking a little bit less directly, I suppose? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's changed. Uh, I just think that Joe Biden is, is more than most of us, uh, a man who has strong feelings and emotions and is inclined to say what he feels. It's difficult, isn't it, to, for the West to try and work out the right reaction uh, to the war in Ukraine. You see these horrific war crimes being committed, but of course there is concerns uh, from the West about what escalation would mean and the consequences of that escalation. Uh, do you think that the UK um, has got it just about right uh, in the sanctions that it's imposed, supplying defensive weapons, but of course stopping short of uh, further escalation, I suppose? I think it's a very difficult balance to strike. We are right, of course, to do everything we can to support Ukraine, but sometimes I hear people um, saying, oh, you know, we're not doing enough, and that, that may be right, maybe there's more we can do. But um, as if, uh, okay, let's send troops in, and I kind of think, are you really advocating a war between NATO and Russia? Um, because the idea that that would be better, uh, I, I do find quite, worrying. It, it's horrendous, the situation in Ukraine, and we have to do everything we can to help. But to be drawn into a, a pan-European war, I don't think anybody would thank us. We heard from a Ukrainian MP earlier on the programme, and she said that she felt like people had been half blind uh, to what has been happening with Russia and Ukraine uh, in previous years. Do you think the West has previously taken its eye off the ball? with Vladimir Putin and Russia? I think there's been a perfectly natural um, wish on everybody's part. I mean, the, the whole Gorbachev thing turned people's approach towards Russia, and people hoped that Russia would more and more come into the sort of what you might call the mainstream of, of political life relationships between countries and so on. But I'm, I'm very mindful that any time this past, oh, I don't know, 10, 20 years, if you talk to people in Eastern Europe, or rather perhaps if you listened to people in Eastern Europe who had experience of being under Russian rule, they never had um, this sanguine approach. They were always worried, suspicious, looking over their shoulder, saying, you know, Russia hasn't really changed, you know, um, the, there are people in the Baltic states who will not be remotely surprised, I suspect, at what has happened in Ukraine and who do, do see themselves, if Russia got its way, as being next in line. And in that sense, I think there's been something of a, of a divide 
where the rest of us who haven't had that experience have been inclined to want to see the best and, and hope for things to change for the better in Russia. But people who've lived under Russian rule have always been much more wary. And I'm afraid it now seems to me that we should have listened more to them at the time. And as you say, I think listening is perhaps the key word, isn't it, rather than talking, as you said. Now, you've announced that you're going to be retiring as a Member of Parliament. You were 40 years as the MP for Derby South, the first female Foreign Secretary. Are there any specific memories that you're always going to keep from your time in the House of Commons? Oh, lots. <laughs> uh, too, too many um, to go into. I, I think one of the things that I would say, though, is... Um, when I was first elected, this is a gross shorthand, but roughly speaking, if somebody said there was a photo call for all women MPs, you only had to look round and you had an idea whether we were all there or not. Um, now, I mean, you know, um, it's, it's not remotely like that. And indeed, there was a turning point when we used to have a special section in the members' cloakroom uh, just for the ladies. Um, and I think it was after the 87 general election that I came back and my peg had moved. And I was like, oh, well, there are so many of you ladies now that we've had to make it alphabetical. So <laughs> there, there are lots and lots of um, different memories, most of them good. Most of them good is there. I think that is, that's nice. I love the fact that they had to make it alphabetical after that election. You were also, of course, Labour's first female leader when you were appointed acting leader in 1997. You've said since um, that, you know, the reason the party's never elected a, elected a female leader is because it was just never was the right person at the right time. But, you know, come on, the Labour Party was founded in 1900. Are you really saying it's never been the right time for a female leader? I just think what people don't realise who aren't practitioners in politics is how much luck there is in politics. I mean, let's take the, the classic example, Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher would never have been the leader of the Conservative Party if Ted Heath hadn't really, really offended so many people and upset them so much. They were prepared to have anybody as long as it wasn't Ted Heath, and she got the credit for being willing to stand against him. If one of the men had stood against him, then she wouldn't have been the leader of the party. There's a huge amount of luck. And personally, by the way, my view is the first woman prime minister should have been Barbara Castle. She would have been an absolute star. Um, but it was never quite the right time and so on. So, and as I say, Jen, this happens at every level, uh, local council level, parliamentary selections and so on. There is an enormous amount of luck in politics mm -hmm. and the luck hasn't worked out so far for one of our female colleagues. It will. Just finally, is there anything that you're particularly looking forward to doing more of in your retirement? I mean, I know you're a keen a caravanner. I think um, people always remember these sort of images of you on your caravanning holidays. As, what are you looking forward to doing more of? Well, we had to give up our caravan about a year ago because of my husband's health. Um, and I'm thinking about whether or not to try and get a motor caravan. But there's a space thing about it. That's, that's all. Um, but... Uh, I haven't quite settled into what I would do in retirement yet because I hadn't envisaged it without him. So difficult. And I'm going to leave you there. Um, I know that he was someone who, of course, so many people were very fond of seeing around Parliament. And I know I've spoken to you previously about what a wonderful man he was as well. So, you know, well, my best wishes to you. And thank you very much for being on the show.